Good morning, everybody. I'm Shuman Banerjee from the University of Wisconsin. And uh, today, I'm going to try and give you a, a view of how public safety might evolve in the future with use of different kinds of technology that we can bring to bear. And I can make an understatement of the day saying that public safety is challenging. Really, it's a hard problem. They have to deal with uh, issues every minute. And I think you'll agree with me that uh, time is perhaps the most critical resource when you're dealing with public safety situations. When you get to an incident, uh, the earlier we can understand what's going on, the better it is, and the better we can deal with the situation as well. In general, um, the challenges include being aware of what's going on. There are multiple agencies, multiple vehicles trying to respond to a situation. Being aware is very important. Being able to coordinate across the different participants trying to deal with the situation is also very important. That's always hard to do. And being responsive is the third most important thing in this uh, trifecta of uh, activities that public safety has to deal with. It is known that because of the challenges, sometimes uh, it's hard to keep everything in, in line and lives are sometimes lost because things were not done in time. Okay. So in this particular demo, we will try to give you a glimpse of what technology can do for us, and in particular, show how to respond quickly and effectively by combining new computing, communication, and networking technologies that we have been developing as part of our projects at the University of Wisconsin and at other universities. So uh, we will bring to bear for this problem four key technology ideas. Uh, I will not delve into the ideas in very great detail right now, but give you a sense of what's involved. The first idea is the notion of self-reporting vehicles. So in the future, it is expected that vehicles will be connected somehow. There are many technologies that are potentially available. Uh, new ones like uh, the dynamic short-range communication technology is uh, particularly interesting because it can provide connectivity to vehicles in a new way. And the US DOT is interested in looking into making, uh, mandating that vehicles be connected into the future so vehicles can report what's happening to them in a continuous basis or as needed. The second technology idea that we'll use is aerial vehicles as first responders. Aerial vehicles, commonly referred to as drones, can quickly get to a site and provide potentially live video from the site to a command center so that one can respond to this in an effective way. Now, that's pretty challenging because a drone that's flying through uh, is trying to connect to some network infrastructure and provide a reasonable video quality in real time and has issues because of how its flight pattern and speed and other things uh, are impacted. So we will implement technologies like transcoding in a real-time manner to enable that. The third uh, key technology idea is the notion of geocasting. Geocasting basically refers to the ability to send a message in a certain geographic area. Usually in this example, it will be in the vicinity of where a particular incident might have happened. You don't want to send a message to every single ambulance out there saying, please respond. You want to send it to the nearby ambulances. And uh, in this example, we will do geocasting in an automated manner to get this message out to the relevant ambulances that are responding. And finally, the fourth key technology idea is to recognize that we can leverage what we will call network diversity. Okay? So if you think about it, wireless networks truly are all around us today. At this current location, you probably can see six to eight different cellular networks, say from various operators like AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, US Cellular, T-Mobile, and I can name a few more. You also have in places where they're deployed, you know, things like Genie WiMAX networks, which is available in Madison and many other campuses, um, Wi-Fi networks, DSRC networks. So we will try to take advantage of all of them simultaneously. Why just pick one network to use in, in, in needs of public safety? We'll use all of them because they're all available to us. So 
we implement this system, we call it Y-Rover. It's essentially a small gateway that can connect simultaneously to any and every network that's available to maximize the bandwidth that you can achieve to connect the vehicles, as well as to pick the right balance of sending traffic over these networks. And this is back through various cloud-based services for remote management and, and other functionalities. So uh, using Wirover, we are building a highly connected ambulance that's uh, doing better in terms of connectivity and performance and throughput to make sure the ambulances can relay information back to the ERs as and when needed in whatever way it wants. So all these uh, different technology components, which I will really not get a chance to describe much, is brought together in a new internet architecture that uh, some of us have been working on. It's called the Mobility First Internet Architecture, which recognizes that mobility is one of the key components of the internet use. And uh, it is actually how a lot of these technologies are being introduced into this demo today. So um, of course, we have spent a lot of time trying to build these systems, uh, but we just uh, did not focus on mere, uh, purely developing the systems uh, in, in isolation. We have tried to work with uh, various public safety agencies. Uh, in this example, in Wisconsin, we work with the Wisconsin State Patrol as well as the West Alice Fire Department, which is in the outskirts of Milwaukee. And we have trialed and refined our technology through doing that uh, activity. So before we jump into our demo, I wanted to do a quick video uh, uh, with testimonials from this public safety agency. So can we run this video, please? Going back to our demo plan, so here is what we are going to do. We are going to see a number of vehicles in the demo today. I'll just briefly describe to you what we expect to see here. So we will be using uh, these fun little vehicles that you see on screen. It's called an uh, urban electric vehicle. Uh, it's been uh, manufactured by a company based out of Chicago called Innova Dash. Uh, brought to us at UW-Madison in collaboration with Internet2. They are highly instrumented for various kinds of interesting research applications. We'll be using them for this demo to demonstrate a lot of the capabilities we developed. In addition, we will be using um, the aerial vehicles. Uh, we will be using the DJI Phantom quadcopter, and they will be outfitted with cameras and Raspberry Pis for computation, and will be uh, showing us feeds from there as well. And finally, we will be using a lot of infrastructure in Genie. Um, we will be using the Genie racks and the layer two network, uh, which will allow us to do things like transcoding data on the fly, geocasting, and various non-IP connectivity uh, solutions. We will be using Genie WiMAX uh, for wide area connectivity as well as for mobility. So that's sort of our infrastructure that we are uh, bringing to this uh, demo. Now, let me go over quickly the demo sequence that hopefully will play out in a few seconds. Uh, we will essentially have some people merrily driving around downtown Madison, and uh, unfortunately, they might get into some kind of an incident. And uh, when that happens, the vehicle will send an automatic alert over a DSRC network, the Dynamic Short Range Communication Network, to the command center, that is us. We are the command center for this demo. And because of that, we will say, okay, let's fly in a drone, which will go and provide us with a live video feed so that we know what's going on. Um, based on that, we may say, okay, uh, let us send out an alert, a geocasted alert, to any ambulances that are in the vicinity of this incident. And the ambulance that is in the vicinity will also be provided a video feed from this drone so they can see what's going on. And then the ambulance will be asked to get to the location and at that point, essentially, it can send us a video feed or data from the individuals involved and so on. So that's what the demo is going to be. Okay. So with that, uh, we will jump into the demo. So I think um, the, we will bring up a map first. Um, so the map, if you are able to see it, it's on the far right side of myself. And uh, the map shows three vehicles. I know it's a little small. The blue vehicle is the, the, what we'll call the incident vehicle. That's the one that'll get into an incident. Um, it's going to do, go on its joyride. And then there are two ambulances somewhere. This is all in downtown Madison. And um, uh, first, uh, what we would like to do is to connect with our friends in Madison who are actually going on the joyride. So, joyride. so can we connect uh, over video to the folks in Madison? Uh, yes. So on the screen on my left, 
we have uh, Grayson Hensley and uh, Cliff Buchanan with him. Uh, they are sitting in this particular vehicle, the urban electric vehicle. So uh, I will first uh, connect to him and let him tell us what he's planning to do and tell us a little bit about the vehicle he's driving. Gray, can you tell us a little bit? Hi. Okay, so while they are going on their joyride, and you can, by the way, see an uh, image of Bucky Badger, uh, the Wisconsin Badger uh, is our mascot uh, at the university behind him. And they're going on a joyride in downtown Madison. It's actually uh, a pretty day, um, and uh, they are probably going to the park to see some sights. And uh, we will uh, momentarily follow their activities um, as they go through this uh, route. Maybe it uh, is a little choppy, but uh, I suspect pulling into the park they're pulling into the park now oh what uh oh slow down gray we're going oh, no. to have an incident we're, we're having some careful. kind of incident ah. 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 Oh, oh. oh no goodness that's pretty bad something happened over there the video feed is lost by the way, on the map, on the right, you can see that we have an alert came from the vehicle. The, the icon turned red. That beca that's because of the DSRC message that got through and told us something's wrong. So obviously, it's, it's a serious situation. We need to do something about this. And what we will do is, as the command center, we will now fly in a drone to take a look. So can we have the drone on, on the center video, on the center screen, please? So. Um, what you should see soon is, uh, this is the, the drone actually on the ground. It just takes off. Um, we had a bit of, uh, I think, rain and snow over the last couple of days. Otherwise, I would have told you there's no snow in Madison. But this is Madison, Wisconsin. Beautiful Lake Monona close by. And um, the drones are going to fly over and get to our site so we can actually take a look at what might be happening with the gentlemen who are driving the vehicle and uh, how, uh, you know, we can, what we should do to take, uh, take care of their problems. So the drone's kind of flying over trees and is going to kind of come down. Uh, you can see the park. This is the parking lot of the park that they were driving into. Um, it's going to slowly descend to the location. Yes, they had some kind of an accident, yes. So uh, it's a problem. We definitely need to respond to it. And the drone will probably hover over for a while and tell us <laughs> that they have a problem. Great. So at this point, we know we have a problem. We know sort of what's going on. What we would like to do is to send out the geocastered message to ambulances in the vicinity. So could we actually send out that geocastered message right now? Uh, you should see it on the map. So we can, can we send out the, yes, there is a geocastered message. The one ambulance that's in the range of a one mile radius turned green, which means it's accepted the geocastered message. Now, I know there is folks in the audience who also have been given some devices uh, which receive this geocastered message, pretend you're the police chiefs and others. And I understand that the people who have raised their devices actually have also received it. So that's excellent news. So now, uh, what we would like to do is to connect to the particular ambulance that's going to respond to this incident. So on uh, one of our screens, could we uh, get a direct feed to the ambulance that's going to respond to this situation? There we are. So in the center screen, we have uh, two gentlemen, Alex Sherman and Peter Den Hartog, who are going to be driving the ambulance. It's also actually an electric vehicle that's going to be driven around. But pretend that's the ambulance. And uh, let's have a conversation with them to find out what's going on. So Peter and Alex, could you tell us if you uh, actually received the message that we all know you should have? Uh, could you just I think it's Yep, we just received an incident alert on mobility first, uh, right nearby. Fantastic. So uh, with that, what we would like to do is we will send you a, a video of the drone, uh, from the drone. There's a drone flying nearby the incident, so you can take a look at what, what's going on. Could we have the video feed sent to uh, the ambulance, please? All right, uh, yeah, Alex is pulling it up right here. Looks like we just received that. I think your video is a little bit stuck. I know you were going to turn it around. There you go, yes. So you can see on their laptop, they are actually getting the same video feed that we are getting from the drone right now. So that's excellent. Uh, I think what we would like you to do, therefore, is to respond to this situation quickly. Please drive out and go and uh, take care of the situation as uh, it's probably pretty serious. 
so they are driving down through downtown Madison, zipping through town, uh, trying to get to their site as quickly as possible. Um, again, these vehicles are connecting over multiple networks and uh, trying to maintain connectivity, showing us video feeds from different locations. The ambulance will probably momentarily get into the park. On the map, you will probably see the ambulance moving. The thing updates infrequently to let you know where it is. And um, I believe it's uh, going to come up to the turn uh, where it will get into the park. There it turns into the park. And on the, uh, on the ambulance video, as well as the drone video, you will probably uh, see both of them soon. So the ambulance is approaching. And there it is. The ambulance is now at the site. So that's for most what we wanted to show you with this particular uh, demo, but there is one last thing as uh, is interesting to do. And uh, I believe the, the folk from Madison have a small message for all of you, and we will see this message in the drone video. So let's have the message on screen, please. And by the way, that's a beautiful uh, electric vehicle that we, are, uh, we got recently and are playing with. So there is your message. It says, go Badgers. The Badgers, the Wisconsin Badgers, are in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament. So please wish them luck. Thank you very much. So, thank you. So with that, uh, just a quick acknowledgement. There's a number of people who helped put together this demo. And I just wanted to quickly acknowledge all of them uh, through this uh, list. Uh, all from Wisconsin, from Genie, GPO, as well as from Rutgers. And we are always looking for more sites and more locations to do our pilots, and I would love to get involved if anybody else is interested in working with us. So with that, I, would, uh, you know, I showed you a demo of what we did, but I think there is a lot of internal details that obviously I did not get a chance to speak. And to do that, I would like to introduce on stage uh, Professor Dipankar Ray Chaudhary, who is the director of WinLab. Uh, at Rutgers University, and also the PI of the Mobility First Internet Architecture Project. So, Ray. Thank you. So, thank you. Uh, okay, good, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, you saw the application focus, and today we really would like to keep the focus on the applications, but I will bore you for about five minutes with a bit of detail about what's under the hood in terms of what is the enabling network technology for the demo that you saw. So if you looked at that demo and you're a networking person, you would realize that there is a lot of complication involved in all the different steps that Suman just went through. For example, geocasting, which you mentioned, uh, requires the network to be able to send messages within a given geographic area and to efficiently multicast them, as an example. Then there are other examples, what we call context-aware communication, uh, which is a type of communication where messages go to certain uh, people based on their job function or their current state. And uh, those in this audience who receive these messages on Mobility First uh, handsets were, were uh, pre-selected from a dynamic group which is context aware, and then that message came to that group only. So these are examples of things that we'd like to do, uh, and we all recognize that IP, which is the internet protocol today, was designed about 40 years ago, and it has many nice features that made it live a long time, but a lot of these things cannot be done by IP. Uh, even the simplest, oh, sorry, so uh, the, this slide shows over here that uh, we decided based on this, uh, there is a research program called Future Internet Architecture to take a new look at internet architecture and try to look at how to solve the problems of the so-called smart future that we're considering here. And over here, I give some examples of the scenarios that we were considering in, in terms of trying to come up with an idea of what the future internet should really support. Again, under the hood, what kinds of features would you like to have? Uh, so if you look at the scenario that we covered already, emergency networks is one of those which I have on this slide. But there are many other scenarios which are getting to be quite mainstream. So for example, vehicular networking is taking off at a very rapid rate because cars are all new cars will have some kind of wireless capability and computers on board. So you have immediately lots of new applications that are going to come out of that. Uh, we haven't seen them yet, and it will be quite interesting five years from now uh, you'll be able to do many things from your cars which you haven't thought of yet. 
Uh, there are other scenarios, for example, like the Internet of Things, which receives a lot of uh, press attention these days, which is about integrating the physical world with the virtual world and being, allowing people to use the Internet to connect to devices, to connect to objects around them, to understand state, to improve safety, uh, and many other applications. So that, again, involves a new kind of networking where we really don't care about the IP address of an object that we are trying to reach, but we are trying to understand uh, it's, we need properties like function and location that guide you to the objects that you're going to, uh, to communicate with. So that's another uh, scenario. And then in this picture, I've also shown content delivery to be an important objective. And content now is not only content between uh, massive data centers and PCs, but between mobile devices. So you saw in Suman's demo, there's a lot of content being shipped around. It's just that some of the content came from a mobile drone device. Other content came from graduate students in that cute little car. So uh, hardly do you see too many examples of the content being fixed and served by large host machines, which was the original idea. So I think there's a lot of changes that we're beginning to, to look at, and that's further uh, involved in this last uh, example I have on the right-hand side of mobile cloud services, where you have a mobile device moving around, and you have a cloud in the background which tries to address the content and other computing requirements for that device, but uh, there is an additional requirement of latency, as Suman mentioned, that we wouldn't like to have long latencies for each message going back and forth. We want the computation, for example, there was transcoding built into that demo, where transcoding means converting a video of high quality to a lower quality so that it can be received by a mobile device. So all that needs to be brought closer to the edge of the network, and we see this opportunity when we build these brand new uh, smart cities, we have an opportunity to use new technologies like SDN, uh, software-defined networking, and uh, programmable wireless networks to achieve these objectives. So I'm just going to uh, skip through a couple of slides about mobility first. This is an architectural slide that just shows the overall features for those who are interested in the network. Uh, you can find more information on our website, uh, but this is a project that has a number of different goals, but the top level idea is that we use a name-based architecture, which is in the broad ca category of information-centric networks, where every object connected to the internet, whether it be a car or a person or a group of devices or a, piece, a context or a content has its unique name, which is shown in the top uh, left-hand side of this picture. And that unique name is called a globally unique identifier. That globally unique identifier is then used to attach the object to the network in much more complex ways than is possible today. In particular, this example shows that there are two interfaces, just as Suman showed in his demo. You don't have to use a single network in wireless. While each wireless channel may not be as good as a wired network, we have the unique advantage that there are 15 or 20 or even 30 wireless networks within view of any device you have today. So we can take advantage of that and do what is called multi-homing inside the network because wireless involves disconnection and abrupt changes. We introduce the concept of storage inside the network, and routers in the network do storage and uh, do something called storage-aware routing, uh, which I won't go into the details here. We also have facilities that allow for disconnection and ad hoc modes, which might be typical of a set of cars which are running on the roadway and don't have current contemporary connection to the internet. So this is just to give you a flavor of the project, and we don't really have time to go into the details here. Uh, I'd like to just mention that all this now involves a uh, validation challenge, and this is just a protocol stack I'm putting up for uh, the network techie people here. We have a protocol stack which looks a bit like the IP stack, but has in the middle these uh, yellow boxes which correspond to the name-based components that I talked about, the globally unique identifier or GUID service layer, and its supporting components in the control plane. So these components now need to be tested. And uh, what was unique about Gini is that it provided us with an environment to do scalable and realistic testing. So we were able to go with this project. It's a large project which has involved about 15 PIs from a number of universities. 
uh, over the past four years. Uh, we have gone from early stage concepts, paper design, uh, to much more detailed evaluations, uh, culminating in these kind of application demos that you saw uh, Suman provide. So we have a strategy for uh, evaluation, and you can see over here that uh, evaluation can uh, have two axes, which are realism and scale. And at the, um, at closer to the origin, where we don't have too much realism or much scale, we can do a lot of things in labs. We can also do network uh, analysis, which allows us to go up in scale, but not in realism. Uh, Gini is a, uh, is a facility which again, I won't go into the details of all the different components that we have done here, but we have gone step by step uh, towards uh, initially an open flow type of uh, small scale evaluation, uh, understanding the key components such as the routing protocol and the name resolution service, and eventually going to fairly realistic outdoor test bed uh, experiments such as the one that you saw. So with that, I, let me uh, just conclude by saying that we now have a slice of Gini, and I think Mark explained how Gini slices work. The Gini slice has got a, a permanent deployment of mobility, not permanent, but semi-permanent de deployment of mobility first that allows us to bring in new applications and new users onto this network. And as you can see, we have approximately about eight or nine routing sites. We have three or four wireless access sites where you can actually take these mobility first handsets which were in this room and get services out of them. Uh, so that in conclusion, I'd just like to again thank Gini for all the resources we have and support that we have had for this project over the years and we still have more work to do. Thank you. <laughs>